So today we're going to create a Twitter bot. If you've run out of project ideas or you're just bored and you have a free 15, 20 minutes, uh, give this a shot because there's a million use cases for it and I will show you just how easy it is. Uh, so why would you do this? There you can create an account that tweets certain statistics like joke or meme accounts. I want like a more serious use case. You can send tweets when you release like a new version of an app or a game, kind of like patch notes. Or you could tweet if you detect that certain services are down, like your own app service, or you know, tweet at everyone if Stack Overflow is down or something like that. So who is this for? Really, all you need is a basic understanding of JavaScript. There's actually not a lot of code we're going to be looking at. It's more of like setting up the Twitter API. And you should also be familiar with GitHub and being able to clone a repository, pushing code to a repo. We're going to look at GitHub Actions, but you don't need to be super familiar with that. Okay, so before we start, all you really need is Node installed on your machine. You should have a text editor that you like to use, like VS Code. Uh, you need a GitHub account, obviously, and then you'll also need a Twitter account that you want to send the tweets from. This can be your own personal Twitter account, or you can create a new one for the bot specifically. Okay, so the first part of this is to set up our Twitter development account. If you've already done this or you know how to do this, I'll set up a time for you to skip to. What I've done is create a new Twitter account. You can see in the bottom left, my name is just Timebot Demo. So what we're going to do is go to developer.twitter.com. That's going to load up and we're going to sign up for a Twitter developer account. We'll sign up here. You can see I have my account name, my email, uh, country. I'll just put whatever country I'm based in. I don't think it matters much here. Uh, what's your use case? We're going to hit making a bot and then we'll say no to creating government content. Uh, and then we'll hit let's do this. Great, and then we just need to verify our email because I used a dummy email for this. Okay, so email all verified. We are back at the Twitter developer portal and let's give a name to our app. We can always change it later. So I'm gonna go with timebot demo. Here are the important things. These are all unique keys and you need all of them. So copy each one, save it to like a notepad or something and make sure you name them too. So you know which one is your API key which one is your API key secret, and which one is your bearer token. Once you're done saving them, for sure, we'll go ahead and go to the dashboard. And it's gonna ask us if we're sure, again, so you can save them if you didn't. Hit yes, I saved them. And now we're finally at the dashboard. Okay, so we're on the Twitter developer dashboard now. You can see if you look up here, we've been thrown into project one already, so we'll use that for now. Uh, let's scroll down and we're gonna get this access token and secret, so we'll click generate. And now these we need to save again. So mark these in whatever notepad you saved the other keys on as your access token and secret. Okay, we'll hit, yep, I saved them. And you'll notice here that at the bottom here, it says this has been created with read only permissions. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and change that to read and write. So if we scroll up to the top here, we'll go over to settings for our project, scroll all the way back down, and we need to set up user authentication. So we'll go ahead and click set up here. And all we need to do on these user authentication settings is change this to read and write so we can actually send tweets. Uh, we'll scroll down and our type of app is gonna be bot. So we're gonna select the second option here. And now we're in our app info settings. All we're gonna do here is enter what they call a callback URL. And that just means they're allowed to redirect that URL after we authenticate. But because we're using a bot that doesn't actually have a interface, uh, this won't really matter all that much. So all I'm going to do is use the URL for the GitHub repo I created for the callback and for this website URL down here. Now we can scroll all the way down and we should be able to click save and yes, that we want to change permissions. Now that we have authentication set up, let's actually go back and regenerate some of those keys that we used earlier. So on this access token and secret, I'm going to hit regenerate. Uh, because we now need them to have write permissions and we need to generate entirely new token secret in order to do that. So now I'm going to copy this. I'm going to save that as my access token and save this as my access token secret. Hit yes that I saved them. That is all that we need to do on the Twitter developer dashboard. So now we're going to move over to the code portion. Okay, so we've moved to GitHub now. Um, and I have this Twitter bot template that I've created here. There's probably a lot more like it. Um, I'll throw a, a link for you here, um, but we're just going to use this template here to create our own repository. So we'll create a new repository here. I'm just going to call it timebot demo, and I will leave the rest pretty default for now. I'm going to hit create repository, and this should create a repository for us using the template that we selected earlier. Uh, we'll go ahead and clone this. 
So now it's time to switch to your favorite text editor or terminal. I'm going to use VS Code just because that's likely the most popular choice here. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and clone this repository with git clone, paste the URL. All right, so it's finished cloning. Um, I'll go ahead and open it here so we can see it. So the first thing we're going to do is set up our environment variables. So you can see if you're familiar with environment variables, I have an example set up here with the variables that you're going to need. So what we'll do is just create a copy of this, paste it right here so we have two of them. We'll rename the new one just .env because that's what we'll actually read from here. And we're going to fill in our API keys. So if you have them written down from before, the consumer key is going to be the API key that you wrote down initially when we created the account. So that's going to be one of the first ones you wrote down. Um, and then the secret is the one that came right after it. Now the access token and the access token secret are the ones that we created after we got into the dashboard. So there's my access token. Here is my access token secret. And we'll go ahead and save that guy. So with that out of the way, let's close that. We're gonna open up a terminal here and we're gonna run everybody's favorite NPM install. It should be pretty quick. There's only two packages. Uh, I'll go over those now real quick. The first is just this .env. This reads our environment variables, and this will also come in handy once the project is up on GitHub. And then the other is the Twitter API package. We'll just use that for actually sending the tweet once we're ready. So with that, let's go ahead and close out of the package.json. The main file here is just this index.js. Let's go through this kind of line by line and see exactly what this is doing. So the file is pretty straightforward. It's only about 20 lines of code. Let me zoom out. And we can. Uh, all we're doing up at the top here is importing the Twitter API that we installed. Installed. We're going to import and set up our environment variable configuration, and then we're creating one function and calling it. Function is going to do the actual sending of the tweet for us. So the first thing we're doing in this function is setting up the Twitter client that allows us to interact with Twitter itself. Um, and this is where all of those environment variables come in handy. There are four of them and you need all of them. So once we have that Twitter client set up, we're going to grab the read write property off of that so we can actually send tweets using the client. And then we're calling this v2.tweet method to actually send our tweet using our account. All I'm doing here is sending basically the current date in milliseconds. Okay, so let's take a look at this in action. Let's open up our terminal again. And all I'm gonna do this time is run the script itself. So I'm just gonna say node index.js. We'll run it there and we got no output. Let's go check our Twitter account now. Let's go ahead and refresh here. And we'll see that we actually sent a tweet from this account with the milliseconds that we calculated. So obviously this is a pretty simple use case. Uh, there's not much going on here, but right here is about where you would put any logic that you wanted to perform in order to send an actual tweet with maybe some actual content, uh, whether that's hitting an external API, uh, doing certain calculations with, I don't know, statistics or more daytime logic, something like that, or generating some kind of dad joke to send. This is great but we don't wanna to have to actually be the ones to run the script every time we wanna send a tweet, especially if we're gonna be sending things every day, every hour, et cetera. We're going to use GitHub Actions to tweet for us. So if you've made any changes to the logic, go ahead and commit and push those now. So I'm just gonna go back to our GitHub repository here, and you'll see in the repository that you created from the template that we have a GitHub workflows folder. We can take a bit better look at that with the Actions tab in our GitHub repository. Uh, and this is GitHub Actions. If you're not super familiar, that's okay. We're just going through a very simple, straightforward example right now. And it's basically already created for you. So what you'll see on the left here is we do have one action already that's been created by the template that's called Send Tweet. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. If we click on it, we'll see we haven't run it quite yet, uh, but we'll actually look at the code for the action itself, which is also in the repository. It's this main.yml file. So if we click on this, we'll be able to see it in GitHub and see exactly what the action is running. Um, but essentially what this is doing is creating a node environment for us in GitHub and running the script. And you'll see the important part down here is it's grabbing the environment variables from GitHub itself. So to do that, let's go back to our repository here and we're gonna go over to settings for our repository. And we're gonna scroll down on the left here until we see secrets and variables. To the drop down there and select actions because we need our GitHub action to be able to access the environment variables. And the way we've set this up is actually pretty simple. 
we're just going to add one secret. So at the top here, we'll click new repository secret. The name, as we saw in the GitHub action itself, is env underscore file. And the reason it's a file and not individual variables is that we can actually paste our entire .env file in this secret and it will use it all at once. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go back to our VS code, we'll open our demo, and let's pop over to our .env file. We're just going to select all, copy all of this back to GitHub and paste just like that. Make sure there's no blank line at the end there uh, and we'll hit add secret. Great, so now we have a repository secret called env underscore file. So if we go back to the actions tab, now what we're going to do is click on our action again and we're going to run it this time. So in the top right here, you have this run workflow action. I'm gonna click the drop down and just hit run. So now our action popped up, we can see it's in queue, which means it's currently running and it completed successfully. There'd be an error here if not. Uh, let's see if we actually sent a tweet. If we refresh here, we should have another one 29 seconds ago. That was definitely our GitHub action running for us. So the last and final change I wanna make here is in our YML file and we're gonna edit it, but don't be afraid. It's a very simple edit. We'll go ahead and, so right now this on property is workflow dispatch, which means the only way this action is gonna run is if we come in here and hit run action again. All I'm gonna do is delete this and change it to a cron job, which means it's gonna run on a schedule. And this particular cron job means it's going to run every four hours. If you wanna learn more about cron jobs in this weird funky looking format, I'll have a link for that as well. Go ahead and start commit here and commit our changes to main. And then we're done. Now we have a tweet bot that will automatically tweet the time in milliseconds every four hours. That's all we're going to do today. I want to keep it pretty short and simple. Two things that you could do if you wanted to kind of go off on your own and learn a little bit more about this. One is to try this in TypeScript. It's really not that complicated to turn that little index.js file into a TypeScript file. Not a lot of typing to it, but that might give you a basic introduction to how typing can actually help you. Uh, the other thing you can do is make the actual tweet logic a little bit more complex. I have an example that I'll also have a link for in which I actually download an image from an API, save it in the GitHub Actions node environment, and I will tweet the image along with the text as well. It's just a couple examples of things that you could use this to learn about. And with that, thanks for hanging out. Hope you learned something and I hope to see many more Twitter bots on my timeline clogging it up in the future.